Hello everyone, my name is Prime and today I'm going to showcase you a small little tool I've been working on the past couple of days. It's called CCM, a copy and car movement tool and it will make your life much easier in MTA to add NPC-like moving vehicles to your maps. If you don't know what to imagine, think of my map downtown dash where there have been multiple moving vehicles such as mountain bikes, helicopters um, and normal cars and obviously some other stuff. That's what you can also do with this tool. Okay, let's start with the installation process. First, you will have to open my repository on GitHub. Then go to the top right green button and press on there and hit download zip. Then we will move over to DGS and do the same process here. Once we've downloaded both of these files, we will open our zip archives and then we can move to our server. Once we are here, we will extract the CCM folder first. I mean, it doesn't matter in which order you will unzip both of these. And then we will also extract the GS folder. Now that this has been extracted, we can rename it to DGS. And once that is done, we can move into MTA. Okay, now back in MTA, we will open our console with F8 and hit refresh. Once we've done that, you will probably see two new resources pop up. That's not the case for me right now, because I've already done this process. And then you will hit start CCM. All right, you will see that a window pops up. That is the Kobe clipboard that is also included with the resource, of course, to make your life easier if you um, decide to script something and need multiple marker positions, vehicle positions, or any kind of other stuff. You will see that you've got a settings button where you can also disable um, the window to not show up every time you join the server or restart the resource. Everything you set up there will be lo saved locally. Also, each of the memos will be saved locally. So you don't have to worry if your game decides to crash or if the server crashes. It will always be saved. You can hover over each um, button and or checkbox. Check what it is for. And yeah, we will now disable this option, of course. You can also disable the information that is output from the copy tool. And you can also set your key lines with which you want to copy all this stuff. I will decide to use mouse 4 because that is, for me at least, the smoothest way to copy everything. Alright, but this is not what I want to showcase. I want to showcase this recording tool right here. First, we need to allow the rights that pop up in the top right of our chat box. All right, now that we've allowed the resource to actually auto update itself and modify other resources and our maps, we can go on. And at this point, I also want to thank Chris because he has provided me with the order updater. And yeah. All right, we will move to our map. Okay, now that we are here, I want to have a moving police vehicle right over here. Or at least that starts here and moves some kind of path that I will be driving. How do I do that? First, you will create a marker. Then I will want to have it right in front of the NOS pickup. And now 
what you have to do is rename it. Rename it to something without any spaces. Because if there are spaces, it won't work. Um, we will name it, of course, uh, Prime Police Vehicle or something like that. Take anything you want, but make sure that the marker is not named the same if you want to use different paths. And because I don't just want a police vehicle driving here, I will also record some kind of Maverick, police Maverick that is flying over here. And maybe even a stunt plane that comes from here and flies all the way to our spawn. Alright, now we will go into the test mode. And we will drive to our location where we want to start the recording. This position I think is fine. I will choose and set myself police vehicle. Make the movement more accurate. You could also decide to record it in the, uh, in the Infernus and just reset the ID. But that we will do at a later point. Now you can also decide to select the police screen, but I will just select truth. Okay, now we press N to open the Recording path menu, and there you can see that the pad ID has already been set, and you can hover over each individual box that you can edit, or over each um, text and stuff to see what it is used for, and also have a quick explanation. Sometimes these explanations can be a bit longer, but I'd recommend to read them all in order to make sure that you are doing it right. Okay, so like I said, you could also um, enter eagle ID here, and we will do that, of course. Normally it chooses the skin for ourselves, but yeah, if you want to have any, any other ID, you can just enter it, but like I said, it will always automatically pick your skin and vehicle ID. Now let's name it. Well, police, uh, police car something, I don't know. It will revert to default if you don't set anything. And we could also now choose to use a height offset. Because for some vehicles that is needed. Sometimes the height is too high when you record or sometimes it's too low. That is because of the layer position or the pet position inside the vehicle that is being recorded so make sure that you adjust this value whenever you, you record with for example an Infernus or forklift at least there are two vehicles that I know of that have these issues there might be even more okay now we can also decide if we want the vehicle to be destroyed or not at the end of the path I will decide that we don't want to have destroyed now, next setting is of course obvious. We want to activate the siren lights because we are in a police vehicle. Every other setting you can experiment with and I will also go over the searchlight um, at a later point once I record the police vehicle, uh, the police maverick. But for now, I will just hit record. You will see in the top left that the file is being saved. And now I will just drive along this path into the water. Okay, because I've died, the timer has stopped. What if I don't die? Or you don't die? You will just hit N again and the timer will stop. Okay. Now that we've done that, we will move over and record our next path. That is going to be with the police maverick. Okay. Now, like I said, I wanted to put this Maverick to start somewhere behind here. And now there's a cool thing. Now, because it's annoying, of course, to always uh, steer the police Maverick in the right direction and stuff and so on. And to keep it in the air, you can just hit N and we will be frozen for the time period. 
we set up our stuff. Okay, now we go here and name it Police Maverick something. And now we will also activate our searchlight. By the way, as a quick note, you don't actually have to disable this because the siren lights will only work on emergency vehicles. Okay, now that we decide to actually activate the searchlight, we can set an offset. I'd recommend to leave the offset on the X axis always zero, but we will want to define the offset on the Y axis, of course. Minus three in this case and minus 0 0.5. These are some acceptable values, I'd say, for the police mail rig. It will show up somewhere near the front of the police mail rig. And yeah, that's basically it for the searchlight. And now we can also hit record. It will then send us already flying. Yeah, now, now you actually have to uh, fly skillfully, not like me. And now we can just fly along this path. Okay, once we are done. We will just save it as that and I will then change to the stunt plane. Okay. Now obviously I don't want this. Yeah. Let's move to a position where I want to start the recording. Somewhere over here. Alright. Uh stunt plane something. We want to disable the searchlight. We can leave the offset just like this because it will not do anything in this case. We can also leave the siren lights again. Hit record and now we fly. Yeah. Once we are done with that, we just hit N. And now we can leave. Oh no, we don't actually leave. We just hit enter and open the tool again. We'll now go to import and now it opens this window. Okay. We will want to search for our marker that we've just created and we've named it police prime, uh, prime police marker. We want to select this marker and also one of our paths that we've just recorded. These paths will only be saved to the server, so just select one of these paths. Um, I just want to have this one, this one and this. As you can see, if we select uh, multiple paths for one marker, it will only create this one marker. Because otherwise it will just spam marker creation on our map, but that is something we don't want. But yeah, you can see everything has been set up with the right values and now we can just import it to either our resource or any map. But I'd highly recommend to save it to a resource because um, if you save it to a map, you have to reopen your map. So we want to choose a resource. Okay, it will auto also output that we've saved successfully. And then we can close this window. Now all we have to do is restart our resource and hit the marker. As you can see the vehicle has been created and our police mail rig is coming. And the stunt plane has been flown through its path. But yeah, you can see the searchlight is always on the point of the player. And now this Maverick has stopped in its path and it will just continue flying because we have not selected that it should be destroyed once it has ended. And now I've had also some skill issue and fell off the map. But yeah, that is uh, basic functionality and you can do a lot more stuff and a lot more fun stuff, especially with the adjustable properties. Um, I'd say just experiment around with all the, all the stuff. You can't do anything wrong. You can always go into your resource and remove everything, of course. If you've done or if you've messed up or if you think you've messed up and 
Yeah. I can also see the other police metric and why I won't recommend to use the searchlight if it's not high enough. As you can see, it will bug around. But yeah. Okay. I'd say that's it. And thank you for watching.